In this video, we're going to talk about two fun extensions of apply functions in R. So we're going to talk about how to do parallel computing using apply functions. And we're also going to talk about how to add progress bars to your apply functions when your computations are going to take a long time. So we can sometimes speed up computations performed by an apply function using parallel processing. And basically the idea is that we process multiple tasks simultaneously in parallel instead of doing them one at a time. Parallel processing is particularly helpful when using LApply, SApply, or VApply to perform complex analysis on a sequence of simulated data sets. This is actually how I usually use it. And so I simulate these data sets, I perform these complex analyses, but I'm able to parallelize the analysis so that I'm doing it on multiple cores and it speeds up my computations. The key thing here is that the analysis can be performed on each simulated data set separately. The results for one simulated data set don't impact the results for another simulated data set, which means that our operations can be parallelized. So we're going to provide some small examples to illustrate the advantages of parallel computing when using our apply functions. And we're going to start by creating a simple function, sleep underscore iterator. The function takes an argument i, which is not actually used in the function, but it takes the argument i so that it's compatible with the lapply function. Inside the function, we're going to use the command sys.sleep1 to pause for a single second, and then we're going to have the function return null. And so we define sleep underscore iterator below, so you can see here that we are assigning a function the name sleep underscore iterator, it takes the argument i, and then for each value of i, it's going to sleep for one second, which is just a one second pause, and then it returns null. So actually the function is not really doing anything, it's just returning a blank or an empty value. Next, we're going to use the lapply function to run sleep underscore iterator six times. So we're going to run sleep underscore iterator for i equal to one, two, three, all the way up to six. And we're going to time the operations performed by lapply using the system.time function. And so when we run that command, it's going to take a few seconds here. Unsurprisingly, we see that about six seconds of time elapses because we're literally pausing for one second six times. So we get the results that we expected. So let's talk about some different ways that we can parallelize our operations. So the parallel package provides parallelized equivalents of several of our apply functions. So par and then capital A apply is a parallelized version of apply. Par capital L apply is a parallelized version of L apply. Par and then capital S apply is a parallelized version of S apply. If you want more details about these functions, you can run question mark parallel colon colon cluster apply to see additional details, but we're mostly just gonna, but I'm simply going to demonstrate how to use par L apply to speed up our computations. Before we use the parallel processing capabilities, we need to load the parallel package. One thing I wanna point out is that the available options and behavior for performing parallel processing depends on our computer's operating system. So if you have a PC versus a Mac versus a Linux, there's different ways you can do the parallelization, which made it kind of hard, honestly, to create this video and demonstrate how we do this. In general, it's easier to perform parallel computing on Macs and Linux computers. They don't have as many limitations. For example, Windows computers cannot run forked processes through R, which is one way of doing parallel processing. So we want to use par l apply to run sleep iterator six times, but using parallel processing. The primary arguments of par l apply are cl, which is a cluster object returned by the make cluster function that defines how the processes will run in parallel. So basically you have to tell the function, how are we going to do the parallelization? Then it takes capital X, which is an atomic vector or list to be iterated over. It takes lowercase fun, which is the function to be applied to each element of x. And then we have dot, 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 which allows us to provide additional arguments to fun. 
in order to set up our CL argument, we're going to use our make cluster function here. And I have designed this code to be general enough that it should work on Windows, Mac, or Linux computers. I'm not going to go into all the details of this. If you really want to learn more about how to do this, you can run question mark make cluster in the console. But basically what we're going to do here is we're going to make a cluster with two parallel processes. And so I'm going to assign that, that make cluster object the name CL. And then now I'm going to run par l apply. I'm going to give it CL, my make cluster object. And I'm going to apply sleep underscore iterator to each element of the atomic vector one, two, three, up to six. And so we're once again going to run sleep underscore iterator six times, but I'm going to be doing that simultaneously for two separate processes. Since we're running sleep iterator in parallel using two processes, instead of taking six seconds like it did before, it only takes about three seconds to complete our computations. Another way to do parallelized versions of the apply functions is using the future.apply package. It also provides parallelized implementations of several apply functions. The advantage of the future.apply package is that code can be created that generalizes from being evaluated on the local machine in parallel on a set of local machines or distributed on a mix of local and remote machines. So basically the parallelization process is supposed to be more generalizable and that's why we would use the future.apply package. So we're gonna start by loading the future.apply package using the library function. And to perform a parallelized operation using future.apply, we have to use the plan function. The plan function is sort of like the equivalent of make cluster, but for future.apply. And we use the plan function to describe how we want the parallel processing to be performed. So the code below is going to set up a plan to run two processes in parallel using a multi-session approach. If you want more details, you can run question mark future colon colon plan in your console, but we're going to run the plan function here to set up our future.apply environment using two workers or two processes. And then the equivalent of the lapply function in future.apply is the future underscore lapply function. And so we're going to use future underscore lapply to run the sleep underscore iterator function six times over the vector of values one through six. So this function works identically to the lapply function, but it's going to use parallelization to speed up the computations. Similar to before, it only takes about three seconds to perform our operations though it is slightly slower than the par l apply function. From personal experience, I think that the future.apply package has a little more overhead, but the nice thing about it is that it's more generalizable. So there's pros and cons, but it takes a little bit more time to run compared to par l apply. Those examples were short and simple. We didn't have to wait very long to get our results. But what if it takes a really long time to get your results? In that situation, it would be really nice to have a progress bar to figure out how much longer the computations are going to take. The PB apply package creates many equivalents of apply functions that add progress bars showing the estimated amount of time remaining to complete the computation. Really good news is that many of these functions are actually equipped to use parallel processing through the parallel package. So in fact, these functions have a CL argument that takes a make cluster object. So we simply need to provide that, and not only do we get a progress bar, but we in fact also get parallel processing. So if you want more information, you can run question mark PB apply colon colon PB apply in the console to see a complete list of available functions in that package. So in order to demonstrate the usage of the PB apply package, we first need to load it. And the equivalent function of L apply in the PB apply package is PB L apply progress bar L apply. And as I already mentioned, we can provide a cluster object from the make cluster function to perform our computations in parallel. So we're going to use the PBL apply function, and we're going to run the sleep underscore iterator function six times over the vector of values one, two, up to six. And because we've already created a cluster object and assigned it the name CL using two processes in parallel, 
we're going to pass that as an argument to the PBL apply function. And so what we're going to see here is that we're going to get a progress bar. And because we are running the sleep underscore iterator function six times in parallel using two processes, it's only going to take about three seconds. So unfortunately, it didn't want to show the progress bar in Google Colab. So I'm going to run this from RStudio. I'm going to run my current chunk here, which has the exact same commands as before. And you can see here that we have this progress bar. You can see here that we had a progress bar, which was showing the amount of time remaining. And it took, once again, about three seconds to run our sleep underscore iterator function six times, where we parallelize the process using two processes. So I really like the PBL apply function and equivalent progress bar apply functions in the PBL apply package. You not only get the progress bar, but it makes it really easy to parallelize your operations, which can greatly speed up your analysis.